What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gem Report. This is a follow-up to our previous discussion regarding Spider-Man uh, Spotlight Show, where we discussed our concerns um, and how this movie will sort of play out. And so that evening, we got the Spider-Man trailer. I saw it this morning. Brian... You texted it to me as soon as I was going to text it to you. You got you. You sent it right away. And I'm interested in hearing your thoughts on it. In my personal opinion, let me give you my thoughts on what I saw. In terms of reaction, what the feeling that I had for this movie. I wasn't surprised by any of it. I wasn't excited about what I saw. It was everything was expected. Um, although, you know, this being the first time we get to see any footage, I was still left in a similar fashion as with the previous video in terms of, you know, we don't know what we're going to get. I have a lot of concerns. Let's see how this movie plays out. Let's see how those first reactions come in uh, and those first reviews um start rolling as well brian what did you think i was still excited to see it um, there's something about the the tom holland trilogy that is very kind of uplifting and kind of comfortable it's the way they've shot it the way he portrays it so i enjoyed seeing it i think it yes i think it at least the trailer is pointing you to a fairly straight forward storyline to this now that may be a deke we'll find out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but i think you're right in that the what was presented to us was a fairly formulaic way to get from where we were into this multiversal spider-man and i think the concerns we raised in our spotlight show and some of the along with some of the questions i think are all still intact yes if anything, this trailer probably underlined those a little bit because there may be even more characters in this movie than we knew about. What are the characters are you expecting to see in this in, the, in this movie? So I think a lot of people are wondering whether we saw glimpses of the Lizard and the Sandman. Yes. In addition to what we knew, which was Doc Ock, uh, Alpha Molina's Dr. Octopus. We heard Willem Dafoe's laugh with the Green Goblin grenade. So those are confirmations. We think we might have seen Jamie Foxx's electro lightning at points in this trailer, even though we mm -hmm. didn't see Fox himself. Mm -hmm. And rumors have continued to persist that Michael Keaton's vulture is in this in some form, which would bring the number to six. Right? So vulture, electro, sandman, lizard, Dr. Octopus, Green Goblin. That would be six. Mm -hmm. And not to mention, um, with regards to other characters, not simply villains, we didn't see Toby Maguire or Andrew Garfield in this trailer as we'd hope they didn't show, right? We were like, we hope they, we don't, they don't show these guys. So this was um, a question I had for you. Yeah. I wonder, and I would be curious if you, do you think that showing Alfred Molina at the end of his trailer was in part the result of Alfred Molina leaking to the world that he was in fact in the movie? Most definitely. I think so as well. I don't like, think they would have chosen to show him in his entirety had he not told everyone. Exactly. We would have probably seen just the... The exoskeleton on, yeah, that's all we probably would have seen because everybody else, we just saw their powers and their attributes of who, what makes them an M. But because he said what he said, you know what? We're going to throw you in there because the cat's out of the bag with regards to that. The confirmation is there. Uh, was there anything that sort of 
from what I've been hearing, they're, they're following a storyline that most people didn't like in, from the comics. Uh, I, I don't I forget the name. I think it's called One Fine Day. Yes, oh, yes. One, yeah. Yeah. So it seems like they're um, using that storyline for inspiration to tell their story. Um, it'll be interesting to see if um, on top of people not liking the comic book, they didn't like the movie as well. Uh, I'm just not, I'm not that excited, Brian, for this film. I'm really, I'm really not because I, because I don't want to go in and see, uh, 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 excuse my friend, shit show. <laughs> okay. I mean, but it's like you, you tell me all these people are in it. Again, it's diff obviously it's different from Endgame and Infinity War and all these all these characters. We've seen them already, how they developed, how they came to be, how they came to this point, and that's one of the big questions for this film: is like, how do the how do we get here? Is it simply that spell? Do we see for each of these characters the moment where they were taken from their um, their own reality and into this place? It'll help. Um, but I'm just curious to see how this all goes about because I'm still not convinced. So let's go back. So when I refer to the basic storyline, and then this leads to a lot of other questions, the basic storyline the trailer presented was, and we actually in our spotlight show, I had thrown out this idea that that magic would be involved in the solution here. This mm -hmm. idea that, okay, we are going to pick up where we left off after Far From Home, which is J. Jonah Jameson publicly outing Peter Parker as a murderer following Mysterio kind of giving away his identity yeah. and the ramifications of that. Those lead Peter Parker to ask Doctor Strange to effectively erase the world's memory and put, the, put things back to when people didn't know. So that winds up being what we were told in the trailer is the solution. Yeah. The spell goes badly. And the trailer intimates that it's the spell that opens the multiverse. And I do want to get back to that as a question, but that's what the trailer shows you visually, right? The spell goes wrong and then we see the world kind of changing shape, kind of like it did in Doc Strange 1 or like an Inception, like kind of like that style of world in motion. Mm -hmm. And it leads to, okay, worlds are colliding. Here come all the villains from other Spider-Verses. And even though they didn't show you this, that would then naturally lead you to, hey, why don't we go get the heroes from the other Spider-Verses to deal with this? That seems to be the structure, which I think is a fairly conventional structure for this. Yeah. yeah. Here's my number one question. When do you, so clearly this is happening after Endgame because he goes and sees Strange and Strange says we saved half the universe together. So this is clearly after that. Mm -hmm. Do you believe this, when is this happening in relation to the Loki series we just saw, do you think? Well, this could be happening possibly before Shang-Chi. If everybody is correct in <laughs> guessing, <laughs> Wong going through the border yeah, to go fight to get his butt kicked <laughs> by the population. Um, that's hard to tell whether this is happening um, during Loki or at the end of Loki. Um, it's, it could be because there's no one. It seems like. There's no one to come. I don't. I, I, I don't foresee the TVA stopping by, and if the TVA is not stopping by for these situations. Is most likely happening afterwards, where things are just getting out of control, and there's no regulation, I guess. But that's why I asked the question because Loki clued us into this idea of the sacred timeline and the idea that only things that are not supposed to happen are what draw the attention of the TVA to be corrected. So what I was trying to figure out was, was this botched spell supposed to happen or was it triggering an event, like one of those chaos events that they talked about in the show 
which would kind of cause the branch timelines to occur. Because the fact that we're getting all these villains coming in from other universes would kind of suggest it is a chaos event. But we've also seen, like I said, we've discussed like the TVA has sort of said like, well, you can, you can manipulate time, but if you were supposed to manipulate time, then it's okay. So mm -hmm. I, I think had we not seen Loki, this trailer resonates actually a little bit differently. But as it is, it asks more questions, even to the point of, are we sure that that Doctor Strange is our Doctor Strange? Are we 100% sure? Because there's something weird going on in the Sanctum. It's all snowed under. He's in a yeah. hoodie. He acts a little bit differently. Like, are you know, just had we not seen the show, I wouldn't ask the question. But now that I've seen the show, we're just on the lookout, I feel like I am at least for these oddities and the twists with yeah. characters we know. Yeah, that it does beg to ask ask the question like what the hell is going on at the sanctum where that that it's you know there's snow in there. I, I is is very uh um confusing to see that. Um look it's it's still very early to tell, although there was a, a theory that I had that I can't remember what it could be but oh there was something that he said that sort of gave me some understanding as to how much uh, dr strange knows about the multiverse which he said is very little mm -hmm. so that intrigues me somewhat into coming towards a realization when things start getting out of control and he is finally uh her him and um um wanda uh scarlet witch are facing this chaos that they sort of have to tame so that sparked some interest in in in, in me to sort of watch how this transpired i mean brian regardless of these movies being whack or whatever the case would be. I've been watching why because I want to understand what the hell is going on, you know, within this universe. There was also a moment though in this trailer where I felt like there was a potential looming plot hole for the multiverse, which okay. is when Tom Holland fouls up the spell. Yeah. We're led to believe in the trailer that he basically disrupts the spell by kind of being a kid and kind of saying, well, I, I don't want it fully reset. I... So why is it that if strange reset things that peter parker couldn't just then tell the people he wanted after yeah so acting like that's something that can't be undone or redone seemed a little bit flimsy as yeah. like a reason to freak out and then i guess that winds up being the trigger event for kind of everything else we see yeah so I'm a little bit that I flagged that as like a let's see if they tie that one up as tight as Loki tried to tie up all the rules and explain yeah. things. It sure it sort of tells me the I guess what's the word? How unethical Peter Parker is <laughs> and wanting to make people forget. Like imagine Professor X was around. Would Peter go to him and tell him to, yo, could you just uh, do this and we'd be, you know what I'm saying? So I, I guess it's it, being a kid, though. Yes, I feel yes, like that's yes, a, yes. What a kid yes. would do, right? A kid yes, imagines yes. the world simplistically. Uh, yes, yes. You could argue this Peter Parker has been through much more to where he should be more mature. But I think that's what that's hasn't every kid at one point in time wished for yeah. something about the world to instantly change or change back. I'm waiting for Peter Parker to, to, I'm waiting for the Peter Parker and the Spider-Man that lives by the mantra of, that was given to him by um, Uncle Ben. Yeah. He hasn't, he, in my eyes, he hasn't reached that point. Um, Obviously, throughout these the, these movies, you've seen him sort of struggle with being Peter Parker and and Spider Man, and he still hasn't evolved from that yet. 
which sort of like I guess it sort of um doesn't sit well with me with him asking for something like that, you know, and that Doctor Strange would actually do something like that, you know? I think that's fair, but like if we were to take this objectively, he's kind of been spoiled. Yeah. I mean, look how many suits he has. Look how much tech he has. I that mean, bothers he's me had too. A, he's kind of had a lot given to him relative yeah. to other heroes who built their own. I mean, Tony Stark made the Mark I in a cave <laughs> by himself. And that's about as spoiled a you know, rich Brad as you could want. So I'm yeah, just pointing yeah. out that like this version of Spider-Man, other than his original sweatsuit suit, it's kind of been just given to him because the battle required it. You yeah. know? And we see that again in this. He's got the Iron Spider. He's got kind of the nanotech instant suit. He's got the black and gold suit, it looks like. Mm -hmm. so he's got, and he's got his original, he's got like four suits, I think we see in the course of this trailer. Yeah. Which like, for me growing up watching the comics and watching, not, uh, reading comics and watching um, the animated series, it's like, can we just stick to his basic suit, man, and just focus on him being Spider-Man instead of always constantly changing his suit up? It's just I like, think it, the reason they do that though, Pablo, is because, and I thought about this in the context of Eternals and Shang-Chi, there is only so much visually that you can do with Spider-Man from a powers perspective. He doesn't have an unlimited range, right? It's basically the web shooters, yeah. kind of his crawling ability, his his sort of fighty sense. And I think they do it because they know that, you know, they got to sell some toys to the kids and they got to kind of freshen Spider-Man up a little bit each movie. And you can't just keep adding actual powers. So you have to add accessories. And that's yeah. why I think similar to Iron Man, where the suit always changed, the Spidey suit changes every movie. Yeah. But I, I, Iron Man's suit changing is more, for me, a more of progression of, in terms of his, because of his... Um, uh, Agreed. His knowledge, his, his sort his of... His knowledge and experiences. Battles, is, how do I improve? Yeah. I, yeah, okay. yeah. Whereas Spider-Man is just trying to improve himself improve himself being a superhero and, and taking on this responsibility, him changing that part of it. Um, do you yeah, think, go ahead. do you think Charlie Cox is in the trailer? That shot of the person in the white yeah. going into the office who slams the file down. Do you think that's him? A lot of people believe to, for him, believe it to be him. It is quite possible that it is him. And we will have to wait and see, but I'm pretty sure he's going to show up in this film, whether it is as, you know, Matt Murdock, uh, certainly not Daredevil. Um, You're ruling it out 100%. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. ruling. It would be nice to see him as Daredevil in there trying to find out some info, but I doubt it because... The thing about it is, if you show him, people are going to be clamoring for a Disney Plus show right off the bat, immediately. And so I think they're just, just going to wait and see how this turns out. And if the, the man is there, I'm pretty sure it will be, but they can sort of introduce that at a later time and not with people demanding his appearance in a Disney Plus show or movie. So one thing that surprised me was Doctor Strange is in one of the set pieces. He is on the train, manipulating yes, that yes. train through the air. I was a little surprised. I, you know, if we were to draw and say this is he is the analog to Tony Stark in Spider-Man Homecoming, Tony Stark was not a feature part of sort of any of the climactic battles in that movie. Yeah. And that's actually why I asked the Matt Murdock question, because if this movie is really going for all six villains, mm -hmm. then three Spider-Man plus Doc Strange plus Daredevil will be five on six in the final showdown. And that's the only reason I, is there any chance that we do see the costume come back out? Because I, I still don't think so. I wouldn't think so, but when I saw Doc Strange doing as much as he was doing in this trailer, mm -hmm. it at least put my radar out that they are just going to pack this. Because it, I, you, yeah, 
You said I, two movies being rumored. This yeah. actually felt like three movies. <laughs> it felt like three steps, right? Step one is the fallout from Far From Home. It leads him to go to Doc Strange. They cast the spell. He thinks everything's fine, but we end the first movie with we've unleashed the Sinister Six from the from the multiverse. Movie two is they the bad guys get together, they wreak havoc. And then the finale is the good guys rally and maybe all the Spider-Men unite and come. And that's to do that as a first act, second act, third act of one movie, man, that goes to our concerns about how packed this is going to be. And not to mention that there's rumor of Vincent D'Onofrio being in this as well. I was going to ask you that in our spotlight show, whether that like, no, but okay. If he's in it, that's who I'd put in the, in the teeth, in the stinger. Yeah. And I would get excited if he was in it. Knowing yeah. that he is coming to Hawk, I guess knowing that he's likely coming to Hawkeye as it is. So yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, if if they show him at, 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 towards the end of you know and possibly future uh, appearances in other films, perhaps even Daredevil, who knows? Then I would certainly be excited for the future, but certainly not for this film. I think um, I, I'm really not that and not to say that this movie is going to suck or anything like that i don't that's not the feeling well it kind of is but it's more of a concern than i'm saying all oh, this movie's going to suck it's just like I, there's just too much going on for me and i don't know how you do this movie it just i just keep being reminding of street fighter and and mortal kombat and these horrible Hopefully. films won't be that bad. <laughs> it won't be bad. <laughs> That's not fair. It won't be yeah. that bad. <laughs> but that, I just, I just get that feeling, right? Because what they've done so far has been so good, and I, I just don't want them to mess it up, man. And, I mean, and, I, yeah. I, I, it makes me wonder, man, how much of this is Sony's doing than Marvel? I think. As I said, I do think this movie does not feel... When I watch the trailer, I do not get the feeling of resolution. I don't get the feeling of conclusion or culmination of Homecoming and Far From Home. I get much more the sense of level up and this is movie one of this new and bigger path. That's what this feels like to me. Yeah. And the trailer all throughout is kind of pounding that home. That like it's a new it's a new frontier a new world and it's a lot bigger and, and we're living in it yeah i'm concerned i mean i think like we talk about the original spider-man 3 from that standpoint there's other examples of this um you know x-men last stand would fit into this i mean for many reasons but they threw a yeah. lot of characters into that final showdown just to get them on screen yeah um you know you could even i mean i, I think i think it, you could even throw like a rise of skywalker albeit that was a resolution but again you're crowding packing that moving that movie moves at like light speed just to get everyone in um so yeah there's a lot of this you know history of overpacking the third movie in the series and especially this one which doesn't have to yeah i hear you i think the sony thing to me the sony thing is just they, they're willing to give Marvel a fair amount of creative rope as long as it leads to Sinister Six getting on screen sooner rather than later. I think that's kind of their main condition. I really do. They didn't yeah. want to be live on that. And they're with the, how they get there, they kind of are okay with Marvel trying to work with it, but that's the main confines. Like you have to get us to that point. Yeah. I saw a lot of reactions on YouTube and the reactions you would think that they were watching Eternals how crazy these people were acting regarding <laughs> this movie because i think the trailer plays to the very simple premise of you've never seen the six on screen together and you're going to get that opposite spider-man and mm -hmm. that idea is so central to the spider-man comic i do think it's a for a lot of people it is the fulfillment of mm -hmm. you know, a lot of years of hoping i just hope they do it well man that's my, like, I, I wanted to see the Justice League all my life. And we exactly. got to see it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it wasn't what it, I thought it would be or what it should have been. So let's see, man. Let's see. It's still, again, we were thinking uh, similar. Oh, and there was a date, though. So positive December, news. December 17th. 17th the yes. date is in the trailer. 
So at least for now, they are committed to Christmas. So that's a positive that we could get this movie this year. Yeah, I, I think barring any horrible circumstances, I think we're we're set to go on the next set of films that are going to be uh, coming up, Shang-Chi, Eternals, and then uh, Spider-Man. Um, speaking of Shang-Chi, real quick, why are they releasing so many damn trailers for this film? Oh, I, I sent you, I gave you a warning because I, 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 so there's a trailer for the folks at home. It's, it's too, it's, it's been, the trailer's named Run It because the song underneath is Run It and that's what they're using. It, it dropped the same night as a Spider-Man trailer, like very quietly. It popped up on my YouTube feed and I clicked on it thinking, because there's been a lot of featurettes, a lot of like mm -hmm. one minute things, mm -hmm. some interesting yeah. stuff, actually. They talked, I don't want to go too far on the tangent, but they, there's one about the martial arts and kind of what they use for inspiration, um, which is worth a watch. It's only about 60 seconds. But I clicked on this thinking it would be like that. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, oh, no, this is actually another mm -hmm. full trailer. Yeah, And I will say, Pablo, I've told you not to watch it mm -hmm. um, because I still think they show too much. I do think had this dropped initially, I don't think your concern level would have gone as high. That's all I'm going to say about it. There's okay. some moments in this visually that, that they have not shown in the other promo material where I said, okay, okay, I'm, so I'm, 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 I'm interested. <laughs> this, looks, this looks more promising. So you're saying don't watch it because it might. It I'm might, saying don't watch it because it may actually spoil some stuff for you that you don't want spoiled at this point. It, if your it, excitement level is already back to where you're happy. Okay, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I don't need to see anymore. I just but yeah, see. they they yeah. But there's yeah. pieces of martial arts and pieces of kind of Asian epic action that they had not shown, and they do look very impressive. All right. Um. So. You guys pretty much get the sense of how we're feeling towards um, Spider-Man after seeing the trailer and even before. And, and, and for me, again, things still haven't changed. I don't know if that is the same for you, Brian. Yeah, so in our Spotlight show, I think you had said concern level was six, scale of one to 10. And I think your, your confidence that this would be like, the best Spider-Man ever was like a three. And I think we were kind of in the same ballpark. Did any, did either of those numbers change no. after this? No. Yeah. I would tend no. to agree with you kind of in the, yeah. in the same, but other question would be, we've now had, I don't know, leave Black Widow out of this discussion. So let's put Shang-Chi trailer set, um, Suicide Squad trailers, uh, Eternals trailers, and this rank, how would you rank those in terms including of like the suicide? marketing and, and yeah, just like, just like how, yeah then like just kind of the, the full trailers that wb used to promote suicide squad before how would i rank them i would say eternals one guarantee two suicide three spider-man four Okay, so you'd have Spider-Man at the bottom. That's why I asked the question. Yeah, I mean, I probably would, I would have Eternals as a clear number one. Um, I would actually probably have Suicide Squad two and Shang Chi three, to be honest. And then mm -hmm. yeah, I'm with you. I think I think Spider-Man would be. Ah, uh, I'll probably say not. I know I'm not far below Shang Chi. Probably at the same level, even though they're very different characters. But mm -hmm. I'm with you, the, the excitement. I was excited, but I wasn't moved necessarily. Yeah, yeah. Um, one final thing before we, uh, wrap this one up, um, I was watching these YouTube videos and they were talking about, this is a theory and this theory sounds really, really spot on. And this is regarding Eternals. Um, so a lot of people are presuming that, uh, meteorite again, um, is, uh, an egg, right? Okay. And some people in the comment section, not our comment section, but in others, um, were asking, so if planets are being sort of um, planted with eggs to seed a new Eternals, you know, how is this being regulated? Like, if wouldn't wouldn't it be that, uh, you know, you get a, 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 
a, a, a lot of Eternals all over the how how is this being sort of you know um, regulated to a point where it, it doesn't get crazy with mad turn like crazy you know a lot of Eternals and Galactus is the one that goes to feed off those planets and destroy that process that makes total sense total sense right there that made that i was like wow 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 if that is the case where i think we had if it only makes sense for Galact for galactus to be the one to sort of um keep in check the proliferance of the eternals of the mm -hmm. celestial sorry I mean, sign me up. I mean, Kevin Feige, I think, in the promotional work for Shang Chi, has been very clear about saying there's that Avengers Five is not anywhere close. Um, but look, I mean, we get to the point where Galactus is a is a is a thing in the MCU, and he's coming. And that strikes me as good a reason as any to to get the band back, to get the new band together. So if you mean, as I said, they don't need new Avengers. They have things like Spider Man, Doc Strange, these little team ups they're doing. Yeah, they're going to save the big team up. And he even said, if we do it again, we're going to build to it again. We're just not just going to like say, all right, next movie is Avengers five. So of something course. like Galactus, like that kind of threat, you're going to build over a number of films um, before you have the, the showdown. Do you think we get Avengers uh, five, the main vi villain being the, the main villain being Ch uh, Kang and not Galactus. I think they saved Galactus for Fantastic Four. But then you have to but ask No, the I'm question. saying like, I'm saying at that point, it, it'll be, Galactus will be there when you've got Fantastic Four and the Avengers, you know, you can team everyone up, basically. You can take, take your teams, put everyone on the board and fight him. Silver Surfer mm, yeah. will be involved too at that point, I think. Yeah, um, yeah Kang... I don't know if they'll call it Avengers 5, to really? be honest. I don't know if they would have called it Avengers 5. I don't know how long they want to take this. I mean, he's clearly going to be opposed by a collection of heroes that mm -hmm. we've already seen. Strange, WandaVision, Loki, the reformed Loki, perhaps, which I think is how they'll keep Loki fresh, right? He'll be reintroduced as a hero to the team that's opposed him in the past. Mm -hmm. Um and some of these, and Shang-Chi, some of the newer heroes, I think, will be integrated into that. I just don't know, would they call it and promote it as Avengers 5? I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Uh, wonderful questions to ask. Hopefully, Marvel can answer them. Again, you know, Marvel does the, a good job of listening to the fans and their questions and their theories and sort of stealing from our ideas <laughs> to implement it just to uh, let us know that they're listening, which is a good thing, I guess. Um, but that's our show for today, Brian. Any last words regarding Spider-Man and the trailer? Um, it's, right, it's right around the corner, man. It's right around, once we get past it, oh, next week. Yeah, right? And, but... Although Shang-Chi is next week, and I can't wait to see that, I am certainly more eager to see The Eternals. That's the movie that I want to see. Listen, I think if this is, I mean, if, if the theaters can stay open um, and we're comfortable enough, I mean, this is going, we are now entering the stretch, which will be more packed than we've ever experienced, right? We talk about comic book superheroes, but like, don't forget, no time to die coming. You know, yes. so we've got right. So let's just talk about it. We have Shang Chi, Venom, Eternals, Spider Man. We're gonna have Hawkeye, Boba Fett series. I guess Miss Marvel's first quarter, twenty twenty two. But those are all on TV for you. And then you've got like No Time to Die, Top Gun. I mean, like that's all before Christmas. Like wow. Yeah. You know, but, normally yeah. you think about your event movies as like every couple of weeks, one a month. But this is going to be like every single week, you're going to have at least an opportunity to go see something. Oh, Dune. Forgot about Dune. Don't forget that. This is all getting fit between Labor Day and Christmas. Wow. That's a, that's a lot of stuff. I thought 
we were under the impression or there was there's a possibility that no time to die would get delayed or or they're they're, they're just putting it out they're being like marvel and then just i say i heard released. that they couldn't delay it. i heard that they, okay. they're in too deep that they actually couldn't delay it anymore this had to go and i like okay. i said with the rumor break even point is 900 million dollars break even <laughs> yeah that's not gonna happen <laughs> unless the reviews are crazy but even so is a tall order to get up to that number with yeah during these times it's like this is sort of like a reset of the of the movie, not the movie experience, but in terms of them earning that that um, that big box office, and obviously due to the pandemic, you know, people starting to get back. It's going to be interesting, man. It's just so many things, so many behaviors are being changed, um, and we still don't know how this is going to move forward. All we know is that going forward, I. I even after the pandemic, we're going to be getting 45 days um, in theaters and then to streaming. That's something that we know for sure that people have decided um, that's going to happen. Um, but whether at the end of that 45, are they going to charge us? I don't know. I don't know. But we'll see. Um, but that's our show for today. Let us know in the comment section below. What do you think about Spider-Man? Uh, are you excited for it? Do you still have, um, do you have concerns? Do you agree with the, the concerns based on our, our last, um, uh, uh, video and does the concerns, does this trailer solidifies those concerns? Cause again, if you go back and listen to what we're saying. There's a lot going on in this movie. A lot of characters that are going to be shown to us from different movies that we've seen and brought into this new MCU based on the magic, based on magic going wrong. How they pull this off and how what this translates into it will be interesting to to see certainly but that's our show for today hit the like uh hit the, hit that like button hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell share with your friends and we'll see you next time on the nerd gen report